In my freshman year track, we were training for the one mile. It was the most prestigious distance race. Uh, long enough to have some strategy, but uh, short enough and fast enough to be entertaining. And I remember my coach asking me, what's the toughest lap? Uh, the mile was a four lap race, um, quarter mile lap. And we all looked at each other and we were like, the last lap is the hardest lap. He said, no. He said, the last lap is the easiest lap because you see the finish line, the adrenaline and the excitement kick in and you just go into sprint mode and you always can run the last lap. He said, the toughest lap is the third lap because that's the lap where you start to hit the wall, the fatigue kicks in and that's where races are won and lost. A summer in Vegas for poker is a lot like a one mile race. You know, your first week out, you're finding your pace, you're finding your groove, you're kind of getting back into a rhythm. Your second lap, you're starting to find your place and get consistent and kind of build on what you've done and you start to feel like you're progressing and positioning yourself for success. And then the last week of June, it's kind of like the third lap. You see this with a lot of poker players. You see the fatigue kick in, the burnout kick in, the frustration about bad beats kick in. People are physically tired, emotionally tired. They're frustrated. They're angry. People that aren't as good at controlling their emotions can get very nasty. And it definitely is the place where you really have to work hard to focus and dial in. Uh, this was definitely a challenging week for all of us, I think. Um, KL got sick again, had a sinus infection, and unfortunately again was very limited in how much he could play. Uh, as for me and Paul, we were kind of in a place now where we were very consistently making deep runs and finding day twos. And now it was just about trying to get over the hump. I am tired. I don't care what anybody says, you know, this is tiring. You know, playing poker for 11 hours a day. Now, you can play poker for two hours a day if you're not any good and you bust and you're done. But we've been running so deep, so every day is 11 hours, 12 hours. Well, 12 hours, you're done at midnight. And then you, you're all excited. You can't sleep. You can't unwind. So that takes two or three hours to unwind. Now it's two o'clock in the morning, you know. We're from central time, so that's still, you know, a little off. Then you get up and you're like, uh, okay, I have an hour before I have to get into this tournament. And then you play another 11 hours and it's day after day after day. Um, I think I've only had one real day off. For me, it's always been the same thing. Um, even in my bowling career, even in my wrestling career, in my uh, jujitsu stuff, it's always been music. So I'll put my headphones on with some crazy, uh, crazy music of inspiration and things like that and it kind of just gets me through those lulls of like my favorite song is that Eminem song lose yourself you know I'll listen to that over and over you know um, that's one of those songs that kind of gets me pumped up when I'm tired and stuff like that you know, heading into this week, I was really excited about the Golden Nugget 1K and was really pumped to take three shots at it and had everything figured out. But like a lot of things that poker players face, we got into the first flight of the Nugget and it was just all regs. A lot of European players, a lot of very good faces that I recognized, and it was a very, very tough field. And despite all that, we still built a stack and got kind of close to the end of late reg and still was flirting with a bag. And then we picked up pocket queens and a guy that just wanted to double before the end of late reg or get back in just decided to rip 17 bigs with king four suited. And right in the window was a king card and we busted. And at that point I was like, you know what? I'm not doing this again. Um, it's not that I can't play with those kind of players. It's just, it's unnecessary. It's Vegas in the summer. You want to find the softest stuff. So I decided to pivot and play the Colossus. The Colossus day one was absolute insanity. I did not see aces, kings, or queens once the entire day. We saw jacks once 
and that hand went five ways to a flop that was ace king four we didn't even bother c betting we knew we were going to win that pot we had nines once and also lost that hand and that was it for good hands it was unbelievable how card dead we were and yet uh in the second two hour block we just printed chips we were very fortunate to uh go runner runner for a straight and double up through a guy who couldn't fold a set uh then we hit a weak two pair on a board against an opponent that we were really confident had an over pair and we made a hero call when he shoved all in the river and before we know it, we were up to over 150,000 in chips in level eight. And at this point, it really started to feel like maybe we were gonna make another run in a WSOP event. Right before the dinner break though, we got hit by the end of late reg bug again. Um, we picked up pocket fours in the big blinds. Uh, there was a raise and four callers. We completed. Flop came jack seven, four rainbow. Gorgeous for us. The small blind let out. Uh, we called because we wanted to keep everybody in the pot. It's a really dry board. Nobody else called. The turn was a deuce that put a heart draw out. And <laughs> Small Blind just rips 3x pot all in. We snap call. He has a flush draw and he just spikes the flush for heaps. And I was a little annoyed at this point. Uh, you know, this was probably four or five tournaments now where we'd gotten our chips in in a really good equity spot and just gotten wrecked. And in particular, it had been happening a lot right before the end of late reds because these players just have infinite bullets and they just want to fire, 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 pew, pew, pew. And you know, they don't care. If they bust, they'll just get right back in. And we just kept getting wrecked by it. And so I got back from dinner break and I went from you know this huge stack to having to nurse 15 big blinds and I'm sitting there and I'm folding and I'm folding and I'm folding and I'm folding. And I'm like, surely we can just get a decent hand. And it never came. I had to work some short stack exploits with pocket twos and we were fortunate enough to pick up a small pot that way and then uh, I jammed ace nine suited over an open really quick, trying to make it look like aces. A guy behind me decided to call with eights. We hit our nine, we doubled up that way. And then it was another two hours of folding and folding and folding. And poker has got a lot of different situations where it's frustrating, but it is incredibly frustrating when you have tables that you think you can work and play and have an advantage on and you just can't get cards and i'm not talking about like i'm not even just talking about like getting out of ranges you can't even get suited connectors or suited gappers we're, we're, we're getting hands just off suit garbage hand after hand after hand and so we just had to battle all night long and it was very draining and it was very tiring but somehow we got to a bag and we didn't bag a ton. I think we bagged 12 big blinds, but we made the money. We were two for two on WSOP caches. And this was my first day two bag that I'd ever had in an event that wasn't the main event. So it was exciting to finally find a bag and at least get to play on day two. It's like 1.15 right now, probably 25, 30 minutes to get home. We're gonna be back here at Paris at 10, so. 15 hours of poker later, we made it. And look, it's surviving a dance. Um, Field had over 14,000 people in it. 12,000 of those people are gone. Uh, less than 2,000 people will remain tomorrow. We only play eight hours. And uh, look, we gotta love bigs, anything's possible. So hopefully we can just uh, spin it up. But right now I gotta get home and get some sleep. <sighs> This last 10 days was totally different than the 10 days prior. Um, really kind of a rough start, kind of getting a feel of where I was at. But then this last 10 days was, everything was the way I envisioned it to be. Um, playing well, good card distribution, making deep runs. Um, unfortunately, I'm still at that spot that I get to getting up being competitive, being deep in the tournament, starting to ladder up, passing those min caches, getting into the middle of the field where the cash is starting to you know, really mean something, and then running into a bad beat. 
Um, I literally have gotten deep in three to four tournaments in the last 10 days and have lost all ins with hands better than my opponents. But really staged the tournaments correctly, played the front part of this you know, tournament correctly, played the mid stage of the tournament correctly, got to the cash, got through the bubble, um, and then during that ladder up process is where I still need a little bit more work. Um, stealing blinds, I, I, Phenomenal. I mean, for the last three or four tournaments, I've been stealing blinds left and right um, just to keep pace of the blinds going up. So getting a, a steal of blinds every other orbit kind of keeps you in the in the mix of having to, you know, keep those blinds going up as they go quicker. The Wounded Warrior thing, I played it just for the fact that uh, the World Series of Poker didn't take any rake out of it. They also took $40 from every entry fee and gave it to uh, the Wounded Warriors program. So that was phenomenal. That's really what made me play it. Again, there was 4,000, 5,000 competitors playing uh, in the tournament. Day one was pretty up and down. Um, had a good stack, lost a big pot. Had a good stack, lost a big pot. But was really comfortable with my table. So I knew what I can get away with and not get away with. Everything was going smooth, had a good stack. Then they broke our table. So I had to go over to a different table all the way in a different venue. So not only did I have to leave the Paris part, they brought us over to the Bally's part. So that was a, about a half hour of just pandemonium getting over there, getting resettled in. But then again, it played out okay. Uh, bagged a decent stack, nothing great going into day two. Probably had 20 big blinds going into day two. All heart today, boys and girls. Today, it's gonna be all heart. <sighs> Heading into day two with a short stack, obviously we didn't have a lot of expectations. We were really just looking for what we always look for in these spots, which is find one double up, get yourself to 20 to 25 big blinds and give yourself some maneuverability and then see what happens and you know of course the cards don't know that we haven't got cards there's no such thing as like well we didn't get any hands on day one so now we're due to get the hands on day two it's not a thing but you still kind of hope like maybe today's the day that the card distribution is better and day two was a lot like day one we were just nursing their stack waiting for spots being super patient um we were very fortunate we got moved tables a couple times and missed our big blinds and we got down to like seven bigs and I folded all the way to under the gun. Like I was passing on marginal hands, like queen 10 off and jack eight off. And just, I, I just, I was going to be super, super patient. And we get under the gun and we peel pocket eights. And I'm like, oh, finally, at least if I'm going to bust the Colossus day two, I'm going to get out with a decent hand. And so we get him in and we got a huge gift. A guy behind us re-jam isolated with pocket deuces. Apparently he put us on pocket ones. I don't know. I don't know what he's thinking. Like he's never doing anything but flipping at best there. I don't know why people think that playing pocket deuces in a spot like that is a play. It happens a lot more than you'd think. Uh, but fortunately he got his pocket deuces in. He isol jammed. Um, gave us uh, a huge advantage and we held. And now we have, a, you know, 16, 17 bigs and we got wiggle room and now we get to play. And now I'm starting to get excited and the energy's kicking in because it's like, hey, we're two and a half hours into a day two in Colossus. You know, we can find another couple doubles. Like we could make day three, like this is a thing. And so we were patient for another orbit. And then the dream, I look down at pocket aces and I'm like, this is it, two, full days of being patient, of not punting in spots where a lot of people would have taken a marginal spot, of being super, super careful and taking every extreme edge possible. And now it's gonna pay off. Under the gun opens, we jam, uh, a stack from middle position re-jams, and now it goes back to the original razor. At this point, I wanna call because I'm pretty confident at least one of them has an ace in their hand. And if we can get a triple up here and have 50, 55, 60 bigs, oh my gosh, it's on. And he does make the call and they flip over Jackson, ace queen. And time just slows down. 
in these spots. It's like every card takes five minutes to be dealt. And the flop comes out clean and I'm feeling good. The turn comes out clean and now the ace queen is dead and all we have to do is fade two jacks. We're 96% to win the hand. And in those moments, I've been in them several times, you're like picturing in your head every card, a 10, a six, a deuce, a five, a nine, a queen. You're thinking of all these cards. Oh, oh. that's it. And then the dealer flips over a jack. And I'll be honest, that was the most emotionally crushing bad beat I've ever had in live poker. And it hit me harder than it should have. I've been playing the game for 20 years. I've been one outed and two outed and three outed a million times. But what made this different was it was my deepest run at a WSOP event. Um, it was a tournament that I had shown extreme patience and played at a very, very elite level to survive a card distribution that most people would have busted out way earlier. And it was for a huge stack in a huge tournament that had a huge first place prize. And I was destroyed. I, 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 I was absolutely destroyed. Um, and of course, to add salt to the wound, after you bust, you have to go into the line um, to get your place card entered into the system. And you're stuck in this massive line that wraps around the room for 45 minutes while you're watching everybody else play and scream when they hit their double ups and get all excited with nothing to do but think about how literally 41 cards in the deck you know, 39 of them would have given you a huge above average stack and you just had to run into the two outer. I don't even know <clears throat> what I want to say. That hurt. Um, you know, we... Uh, we had so many opportunities to get impatient, take marginal spots, get frustrated with card distribution, and we just continued to stay true, play perfect poker, give ourselves a chance, found a double with eights against pocket deuces, and then we get the dream spot, we get aces, we get it in three ways. We're 96% favorite to the turn for a huge stack, and bam. Tournament's over. It's probably the closest step in to breaking down at a poker table. It sucks. And kind of sums up the summer so far is just deep runs. Kings lose to ace king. Queens lose to five seven. Queens lose to king four. Aces lose to jacks. And those are the hands of the difference between having a big summer and being two thirds of the way through it and nothing to show for it. Um, and people don't understand, 20 big blinds is, is a lot of big blinds. You know, you can play a 20 big blind stack pretty efficiently on a day two. Um, so I did, I just played that stack and I stayed around 20 big blinds, being very patient until I got a couple really good hands um, I got a set, person had top pair, I got it in and they called with top pair, it was fantastic, I was like thank God, uh, doubled up there, I had 40 big blinds and then I got another double up to 80 big blinds and now I'm like okay, now we can cruise into the cash, cruise into the money and have a good stack to get deep. So the bubble broke, we're in the money um, and then I just played position and had a good stack and was able to pick on certain players and keep my stack growing uh, forward. Um, as in all tournaments, as it gets deeper and deeper and deeper, people come to your tables with more and more chips. So I went from being chip leader at my table to being like second or third from the bottom. Uh, as people were breaking. But 
played the stack well, um, did everything you need to do, and then got it all in with aces and ended up losing. So it was just one of those things that, what are you gonna do? You got it in good and uh, you just got a flip that you lost. So if I win that flip, I have three million in chips. So then we're looking final tables kind of stuff because we were in the 60s, we were down to 60, you know, there was like seven tables left. So it was good. That was the deepest run I've made in the World Series. So that was fun. So a couple days later, uh, I was fortunate to make day two of the South Point 75K. Uh, Paul also made day two of the 75K. And we were both just trying to, again, one more time position ourselves. And it was another situation where I didn't come in with any expectations. South Point was crazy um, because it was a small buy-in tournament. So the, the field strength was not as good. Um, these people were definitely recreational players. I mean, I'm a recreational player, but I'm a little higher level than a normal recreational player that'll play a $200 buy-in. So I think it was like a $240 buy-in. They had over 300 people, I think, and there was just bad players. Within the first three hands, um, I lost half my stack. I three bet with Jax, got called by ace, queen, flop came ace, queen, nine. We lost the pot. And I was down to 48K in a tournament that had, uh, I believe, 25K starting stacks. So I had dust. Everybody at my table was weak, so I was able to pick on them, built up a stack. Then they moved more people in, and I got a monster hand. Got it all in, the other person got it all in, I had more and they won. Again, I got bad beat. So then I got knocked down to basically starting stack. But we were very fortunate. We got a double when an opponent called our all in with A7 suited. And then uh, we got another double where, I mean, it was crazy. We were all in, it was a flip. It literally went down. We were, we were on our way out the door and we hit our river card. Oh, we're in trouble. Deuce or four? Oh, wow. And then we got in another huge spot where we were down to our last card and we nailed it on the river. Everybody really tightened up. I always thought that everybody was gonna open up more, but these guys just tightened up and they were just trying to ladder. So it was very easy to take advantage of people that are just trying to ladder. Um, you know, cause you could see they're all looking at the board. They're all looking at the board. So I just kept picking spots mid position on and just three betting anybody with any two cards opening wide uh, and most of the times I was just getting folds no pushback and then we just kept going and going and going and of course then you get down to those last 50 people and everybody's got 20 big blinds. Now we started to have a decent stack and now we started to work the room and now we started to loosen up and open and I'm dangerous when I get chips. It's hard to get chips sometimes because the cards always work in our favor, but when I get them, I usually put them to work. I knew what I was getting into. I mean, it's, I knew what he was on. I knew I was on and I'm like, he's going to have a diamond draw. You know, I didn't, if he has the pair, he's got a pair too. I said, but my pair is going to be better. He doesn't have two pair here. He very rarely has a set. Um, and it was just, I wasn't folding, you know, it was, probably in his favor if you really think about it the with all the outs he had he was probably was like 52 percent to my 48 um but i faded it finally i, I was like Woohoo! i faded one so that was good then it gave me a massive stack and then uh just kept playing from there i was up against an opponent who i'd played with a lot before it was an older gentleman and i've seen him do some weird stuff uh, i've seen him do some weird three bets, I've seen him do some weird bluffs. Um, I've seen him bluff in spots that don't make sense to bluff. He was a guy, kind of a feel player like to make moves. And I picked up queens in the cutoff, I opened, he three bet uh, from the big blind. And it was just a spot where it was like stack depth and position and just knowing this guy was capable, just never full in queens. So I flick him in, he snap calls. I'm hoping for ace keen when he snap calls. He of course flips over aces. And all of a sudden there on the turn is a queen. Holy shit. Didn't even feel bad. <laughs> I didn't, I, I've lost so many hands of premiums in the last week. When you finally get your suck out, uh, there's no, I mean, I'm sure I said, oh man, sorry. 
and I was polite, but inside I was like, about damn time. Um, and now we have over 2 million in chips and we're for sure chip leading this thing. And now the adrenaline is kicking in because now we know we've got a shot to win this thing. And it was about this time that uh, unfortunately Paul got pocket tens in against ace five suited. Yo. Pocket tens, ace five suited. I just gotta fade an ace. Just fade an ace and right in the window. Bang, an ace. Um, and, but you can't get it in any better than that. One over, you know, I got a pair of tens. He only has one card over. So there's three cards in the deck that beat me or a bunch of fives coming out at one time, which is highly unlikely. And we were out. So still haven't made a final table. And I felt bad, that, that did make me feel bad. Uh, Cause I know he's been going through a lot of the same things. I've been going through. And at that point, the only thing I can do is try and win it for him. So we grinded, we spun up to almost 3 million in chips, uh, got down to the final two tables, and then it got kind of dicey because these smaller buy-in tournaments, the structures go really fast, everybody gets short, and ICM starts to matter. And it was looking like we were gonna head to a chop nine ways, which they show you the chop value on the board was third place money. Um, plus, being chip leader, you get ICM chop, you're gonna get a little bit more than that. You're probably gonna get closer to second place money. So I was being really careful heading into the final table because I didn't wanna lose any of those chips because if I can lock up second place money, I can lock up a profitable summer, it's a huge score, everything works out great. We do eventually get to the final table and there's one kid at the table who is a poker professional and he will only chop if they do even chop. And he had like seven bigs. Well, obviously we're not gonna even chop when he has seven bigs and I think I had 23 at the time and I was second in chips and chip leader had like 26. So we ended up playing it out and it was just one of those tables where you guys have been at final tables now. Shorty gets all in, shorty doubles. Shorty gets all in, shorty doubles. Uh, and so we ended up playing for like almost an hour and 20 minutes. Finally, short stack goes out. And at this point, there's six of us left and the big blind's about to go up and I'm about to go from eight bigs to six bigs. And the average stack at the table is like nine bigs. There's no other option at this point. You just, you just chop. Um, and so we ended up chopping for just under third place money. Uh, didn't quite get me to even for the summer, but it put me in a place where I got up another final table. I got a decent score for $8,770. And we were within striking distance of a winning summer. But most importantly, it took the pressure off. Um, it kind of felt like after battling and battling and battling through this frustrating last 10 days, we finally got a breakthrough. And now the fun begins because next week is the main event. And so my focus for the rest of the summer now isn't about, I gotta get this many caches or I need to try and get this many. It's just let's play the best poker we can and let's see what happens. There is no event in the world like the main event. It is a huge starting stack. It is two hour levels. You could literally reg day two and still have 40 big blinds. All the greatest players in the world are gonna be there and it's the biggest prize pool you'll ever play for. What better time to have fun and play the best poker of your life than a $10,000 buy-in? So now we're on to the big main event that I've never played before. I have Perfectly honest with you, nervous as heck. Um, trying to figure out, you know, I hear you and your friends and all you guys, oh, the first day, you don't even have to play a hand, you get blah, 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 all you, oh, yeah, you don't have to worry about anything. I know I'm gonna get a table with five pros. They're all gonna be out there carving up everybody to try to get big chip stacks, but I guess you can't really make a plan until you know who's at your table. There's no barriers now. 
Now we're gonna go into this week, we're gonna get some rest, we're gonna get some downtime, we're gonna get everything situated, and I'm gonna have my bags packed, and then we're gonna see what happens. Today, taking the day off, um, and playing the main tomorrow. So today's just gonna be a veg day, study day. I'm going to have a nice meal tonight, like my last meal, like I'm on death row. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna go in and play poker. And that's, you know, as the cards come, the cards come, and if the poker god shines down upon me, we will make day two. If I bust day one, I'm gonna go home and see my wife and my kids and my dog and sleep in my bed. It's gonna be fantastic. But maybe we make day two and maybe we make day three, and maybe we make day four, and who knows what special story might be in the mix. But I know this, I'm playing the best poker of my life, and I'm ready. And this what he said, you gotta get paid, do what you gotta do, get to the bag. Stay at tonight if I get on the avenue, you ain't cut out for the bags. Yeah, you are not good enough, you are the type of got people they shouldn't love. Anyone knowing you know that you phony, you never cut out for this, you should just give it up. Yeah, but that's how they want me to feel. I am the man of the steel, king of the hill, man of the year. Finally feel like I got it for real, yeah. But all of them voices, we got them. Lie to me, Hillary, rot them. I just came back from my kid in the bottom, and now I'm gonna bring it back all the way on them, yeah.